I don't even think I've shared this, but at one point I, I was, you know, I'd be working with friends on this, on job sites and I'd be like, Hey, if you give me 50 bucks, I'll give you five t-shirts. Like wow. we were making no money, but I was just, how do I get the brand out hey, there? How right. do I get people to like it? And yep. then, you know, because I had friends, so they, you know, they became friends. I'm like, hey, if you, if you give me $50, I'll give you five shirts and it'll cover, it'll hopefully cover some of the costs because I just wanted to get the brand out there and they yep. became friends, you know, but, you know, if you had an athlete, you give them free product. But I was like, how do I cover my costs? Yeah, you know, yeah, to, yeah. so at least cover some of the costs so I can make more shirts. And, and, um, but that was a moment, I think that moment there, I always remember where it was like, we made a thousand tees and we're like, how are we going to sell these thousand tees to buy more product and then start buying hoodies in winter and then screen printing logos of that we really loved on it. Yep. Um, and then we were just kind of printing what we thought cool. And, and then it went from my mom's bedroom to, you know, to have a little office there to then we started filling out the house to then we ended up with one container, two containers, and then three 20 foot containers in the property. Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Jeff. Today, we've got Jason Daniel from LSKD with us today. G'day, mate. Hey, mate. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on board. What's really funny is that where we are located here in Brisbane, Australia, you're literally in the street over from our old factory. Yeah. So talking yeah. about keeping it nice and local. So Yeah, it's been a goal to come back to Logan too. So I'm pumped to be here as well. So Jason, for... for I mean, and a lot of our, our fans and our listeners are going to know who you are because you're, you're obviously sort of in that active, you know, um, where, yeah. you know, space. But tell us a little bit about y your company, what it is that you're currently doing. And, and yeah. then we're going to go back and we're going to find out where it all started and sort oh, of what, okay. what yeah, led to where you are today. Okay, cool. I mean, that's, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's a long story and I am definitely appreciate it. Um, I mean, LSKD is a functional sportswear brand with a street aesthetic. And our mission is to inspire people to chase the vibe through sport, fitness, and adventure. Um, and that's come from 20 years of, you know, living and breathing that lifestyle. I mean, my 35, so probably well before that, but when the brand name first started 20 years ago in 2002, and I was actually still at school. So yeah. it was a high school nickname, Loose Kid. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, so Loose, because LSKD, and it was the brand was originally Loose Kid. So where did Loose Kid come from? Were you a bit of a rebel rouser or? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it, it started out, um, I actually grew up riding BMX and I always wanted to race motocross and be a professional motocross athlete. But growing up, you know, I did have some dirt bikes. One of my bikes got stolen actually. And then lucky enough, my parents helped me get a BMX bike. So I got into BMX riding and I actually used to ride at a place called KP Center that's not far from here. So I grew up in Canubia and Logan yep. and I rode a place in Shaler Park. So I used to ride with a lot of guys uh, that were quite a lot older than me. So I was kind of really lucky to get around uh, a lot of older athletes. You know, I was like 13 and these guys were like 18 that I was riding with. And one ended up going off and winning X Games, Corey Bowen and wow. doing amazing in America. And it kind of almost lucky enough gave me that mindset growing up, um, hanging around guys that were super focused on their like their career. But at the same time, I was, uh, you know, I was the young one and I was the loose kid, you know, and right. uh, I was learning how to ride a bike and I was getting to ride with guys really good. And I was trying stuff that was probably a little bit, you know, advanced for me at the time as a kid growing up. But, and that's how the nickname started. You know, you're, you're a loose kid. And it just started off as nothing. And then growing up, you know, when I was at school, I, I mean, everyone has that word of the month, you know, when you grow up, you always have that word you say, and it becomes a trend word at school. Yeah. That was the word we said. And, and, um, it was just a bunch of fun and I never really meant it to be anything, to be honest. It was, uh, as I started, you know, eventually I ended up, you know, saving enough money. I worked at BP, I was, you know, the 13, nine months, got a job at BP, um, saved enough money. I was really lucky. My grandparents, you know, helped me to, to get my first dirt bike as well. So I could get into racing motocross because that's all I wanted to do was to be a professional athlete and race moto. And uh, it was actually old, the old MSN days, if anyone remembers. And I was chatting to someone on MSN and they're like, you should turn this into a brand. And wow. I was like, oh, why? Like, what's a brand? You know, what, what is it? And so I didn't never, it never really kind of started to be anything. It was just this thing that we, this word we said, and it was just a ton of fun, but then it turned into something that I never thought it would but it was almost like it was destined to be. It's really weird because, you know, I'm so passionate about our mission and values and what we do and what I did growing up and wanting to be a pro athlete and, you know, having to work to, to where we got to today and, you know, becoming a carpenter and building houses. It was all a part of this journey I got to go through, you know, I never made as a professional motocross athlete. So I, uh, right. I definitely wasn't good enough, but I was aspiring. But yeah, it, it's um, it's just been wild to see it come to life. And, and you know, back then I was at school and my, my mom actually got me the trademark papers so I could trademark at Loose Kid Industries. Wow. 
So from 2002 to 2007, we were Loose Kid Industries and I finished school in 2003, you know, we were making some hats, we were setting up at motorbike events and we were selling pretty much out the back of our van, you know, with a tent and selling product. And in 2007, I was actually already a first year apprentice carpenter and I just, something clicked and I just said, you know what, I'm going to do this. This is going to be my career. Uh, I'm going to turn this company into something and I actually wanted clothes to wear. Uh, when I wasn't racing, you know, there was in the gym, I was, you know, back, you know, then you'd gone to music festivals. It was just, you know, what Chase the Vibe is today, you know, with sport, yeah. fitness and adventure. And yeah, I just, I kind of was like, you know, I'm going to make this my career. I want to do this. I want to, you know, and I didn't, I didn't really know why. I just wanted it to be a job and yeah. I really wanted to turn it into something. So in 2007, I decided that was it. I'm going to do it. And, you know, I was getting up at, you know, whatever, 4am and working till, you know, 5.30, jumping in the car, starting work at six on a job site. In my lunch break, I was getting on the phone ringing retailers or, you know, you know, ringing up magazines and, you know, trying to get articles in magazines or trying to get cheaper ads in there because we had no money. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were literally using a credit card and just trying to get the thing off the ground. And literally, you know, from there, I was coming home, I was going to the gym, I was training at night. And then on weekends, I was racing on a weekend. So, you know, by then we had a, you know, just a one page catalog with a couple of t-shirts. Um, I had to find a local screen printer you know, did all the search of how to find a t-shirt and where to get a blank tee and print it locally. So we literally yep. did local manufacturing for, I think it was up until 2011. So uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it literally just, we just, I just did whatever it took to, to become a career. And through that, I got to meet athletes, you know, at the track and didn't realize through that whole journey, I was spending a lot of time with different athletes, you know, uh, you know, different what you class entrepreneurs today and all these different people. And, you know, I was learning, I was going on the road selling products. So I was walking into retail stores and on a Saturday, say I was racing at Harvey Bay, I would jump in the in the van uh, to, you know, my, my wife now, but girlfriend at the time, and even it was my mom, or my brother, and we'd go up and we'd leave early on a Saturday. I'd stop at Gimpy and I would literally walk into this store to try and sell them t-shirts on a Saturday. And they're like, you shouldn't be selling on a Saturday because that's the day, you know, the busiest day. But I'm yeah. like, well, I'm working full time. So I'm going to try and get into store on a Saturday. And then they close at 12. So I had to get there before they closed. And right. then I would get back in the car and drive to Harvey Bay and I'd race on Sunday and then I'd come back home and then you know, work full, work full time during the week and then do it all over again. It was just literally just grassroots and I'd go to events. So it, you know, just whatever it took, you know, to get it out there. And then I decided to go part time with my apprenticeship. I think it was 2000 and mid 2008. I think it was, I went part time in my apprenticeship and said, you know what, I've got to go part time. And I finished it in 2010. Um, I couldn't afford to go to, to TAFE. So I, I had to work three days a week so I could afford to live and then did the brand LKI two days a week wow. and just, you know, work for a bunch of different builders so I could, uh, you know, so I could survive. Yep. And, um, and then in 2010, I actually snapped my wrist getting ready for the season and got some plates and screws in it for getting ready for like stadium motocross, which is kind of like a supercross season. Right. And I had a supercross track in my backyard. So I ended up breaking it at home um ended up you know getting this insurance money from combined insurance so i could live uh it's kind of like they had this sports insurance back then really? it was great wow. yeah you look lucky that you had it yeah you make money off breaking bones it was fun and um yeah and then i just said you know what i'm not going back and uh in 2010 i decided to go back to you know i think it was you know i think it was on 240 dollars a week you know first year apprentice wage yeah, again and said well i'm fun. stoked like this is it i'm you know, and I was 23, I think by then. And yep. um, I was like, I'm not going back. And uh, yeah. So how, how much money in those early years? Because I mean, obviously fast forward to today, you've got, uh, I think one of the girls was saying about 50 odd employees. That, that uh, we're at, I think we're at 60 full time and 60 about a hundred with the, with the uh, casual team wow. as well. And, and I mean, again, your, your turnover is probably not public record, so we don't need to talk about that. But obviously you've got a multi-million dollar business now. You know, do, do you talk about what your turnover is? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, it has been out of the public. I mean, we'll do over, uh, you know, over 50 million this year, which it's is, it's, amazing. Yeah, it's wild and it's very, excellent. very well thankful done, and yeah. Yeah, thank you. And I mean, and you know, we're, we're just getting started. I mean, there's so much to do as a brand and, yep a team and, and what we're doing, it's it's such early days for us. Um, and, and, and spending time here now, and again, um, you know, I, I knew of you, but I didn't know, and I just love your setup here. It's very you, it's very authentic. I mean, you know, e- even some of the mission statements and or, you know, catchphrases that you've got on your wall, like I can see the one before you, enjoy the journey, have fun, be yourself, embrace diversity. Like yeah. the whole place just emanates your personality and who you are. So being the, the entrepreneur that started as a, 17 year old kid back in 2002 did you ever dream that this would be what it looks like 
Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, I've gone on a really long journey to to kind of find myself and my why and 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 what our mission and values are today. Um, I, I mean, you always dreamed it could be be, be big, right? Yeah. Like I think you always dream you want to be a big brand, but I didn't know why. Yeah. Um, and you know, we went from being a wholesale business to now we're you know with e-commerce and you know we've just opened our first retail store and. But yeah, you always envision to be something. Um, but I think, it, you know, if you f focus on the money, then I don't, you know, for me, it was about having a job and I just loved to do it. And I just yeah. wanted to have it. It was a job for me in terms of like having a career. It was mm -hmm. never about the money. Mm -hmm. But when, when we, you know, when I started to realize and I started getting obsessed with books and, you know, finding different mentors and understanding, you know, Simon Sinek start with why and yep. different books like that, that really, you know, good to grade and, and really started to listen yep. to these things. I was kind of questioning what, what's, yeah. And, and what am I here for in that, yep. in this journey? And that was around 2017, I think it was. And, and um, yeah. And when I started asking those questions, I was kind of like, well, you know, what is our mission? What do we stand for? Why do we come to work every day? Like what, what what's the reason why we come to the office? Why do I love coming to the office? Why does the team? And we're about a team of 12 back then. And, you know, we were, we were, you know, we transitioned to LSKD in 2018 yep. from LKI. So, yep. you know, from 2007 to 2018, we were LKI. And when I went through that, I was like, well, we're making way too much product. We were, you know, we were making life jackets, motocross gloves. We wow. were making sportswear, we were making streetwear. And I was like, hang on, like I'm in so many categories, but not really good at one. Yeah. And when I went back and the history of growing up and, you know, training in the gym for racing moto, you know, it, you know, loving wearing sportswear, but also love that street side. We are like, well, why aren't we doing what we feel is authentic to us? Mm -hmm. And once we started to make that decision that we got clear on our product journey and then got clear on the mission and values and went, okay, well, when I started to create the mission, I actually, actually got our team involved and said, well, instead of me coming up with it, you know, as you said, you see all the, you know, our values on the wall and that, that actually was created by the team. Yeah. You know, that wasn't just me. It, it was a real where I got everyone involved because I needed the help, you know, and when we, when we started to really get everyone involved, I didn't realize that everyone was a part of it then, you know, when we transitioned the brand from LK to LSKD, I had the team to help on what we should do. And when we created the mission of inspiring people to chase survive, I was just getting everyone to help through whiteboard sessions and just keeping it really grassroots and going, what do we do here? And what do you guys think we stand for? Cause as a founder, you can be quite emotionally attached to it yeah. and you can kind of get stuck in your own ways. And I thought, well, if I learn from the team, they're going to know more because they're not as emotionally attached to it as I am. And I could probably get a little bit, you know, coming from working from a job site environment, I've had to learn a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this. And then I'm like, wow, this is really powerful. Like they're actually making, you know, they know so much more because I'm sometimes a bit too in, emotionally attached to it. So yeah, it, it's close, been wild yeah. to watch it come to life. So, so obviously your team, and this is interesting because Good to Great, which is um, by Collins, great book, yeah. talks about getting the right people onto the bus and then working out where they sit. And then you can take that bus wherever you want, right? Yeah. So your team of 12, obviously, almost like the 12 disciples, right? So <laughs> obviously they, the, you, you hired them <laughs> Not because they're just any Johnny off the street, but because obviously you saw something and then there was an affinity. Well, I didn't even know what that book meant then. Right. So I didn't even really but, know but what that- But naturally, instinctively, you've hired people that had a similar vision because if yeah. they've been able to obviously- Yeah, you're right, if yeah. You, if you like um, sort of articulate the vision, then obviously there must be a really close knit sort of you know founding team. Yeah, there was. And, and to be honest, that team was, you know, people that were into sports, whether they're in action sports, and it was really, it kind of naturally- came together yeah and then yeah well actually when you see you start to articulate like how has everyone come together through different walks of life yeah. that have come through the brand and come on board and realizing it's not you know it's you know it's first who then what yep. um yeah. and then as we started to realize that and then i started to really articulate the team and understanding of like you know why do people want to join our journey and how do we get them on a journey with us of you know our mission and values and then helping develop their careers for their futures uh and that's happened over a really long time it sounds really easy to talk about it now but yeah, that that when I look back on it now, actually, you, you realize that you know, say Dylan, our our you know our head of brand, he you know raced motocross growing up. I knew him from the tracks. Yeah, you know he came. He's been on you know he's been on board with us for ten years now. He did leave for about eighteen months. Yeah. Uh, he left, and I was like, I need you back. But we were both growing and learning, and you know I made a lot of mistakes. And he left, and then he and then I and then I asked if he could come back again. You know he was an amazing product developer and designer. And when I look back at that 
example, like we raced motocross. He knew the brand from the early days. He understood the heritage. He actually created Chase the Vibe. Yeah, right. Uh, I had Live Your Lifestyle and everyone liked Chase the Vibe better. I yep. created Live Your Lifestyle, which was the slogan of LKI. And yeah, yeah. he created Chase the Vibe. And and uh, then we got to the point where I was like, everyone, what what is what is the team like? And everyone said, Chase the Vibe. I'm like, well, it's not up to me. Uh, they've awesome. got a much better idea. So yeah, you didn't realize that there were so many amazing people that have come through to help us to where we've got to today. and even down to, you know, so many in the team now, uh, you know, Keith, our COO, we met over 10 years ago at a music festival and, and kept in touch. And, you know, he traveled overseas and worked for a brand for five years. And, you know, he was back here working for another big brand. And, you know, we kept in touch and he was, you know, helping us through the journey with his HR experience and, and just teaching me and I was learning. And then when the time was right, he could come join the team. So you don't realize that you know all these amazing people around you that who potentially could join your team as you're growing and, and it's the who, you know, then the what. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you do need to change where the ship is steering sometimes because you're going to make mistakes. And if the team are prepared to, you know, if they know that, hey, we're going to have to steer the ship this way a little bit because we've made a mistake here, but you're not changing the whole brand or ethos or the mission, but you, you, you know, you're always trying new things as you're growing as a brand and yeah. they're okay with change because, you know, one of our values is move fast, break shit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know, we're, we're always learning and not everything, you know, everything we try, not everything works, yep. do you know, and we're constantly learning that as well, which is okay to make mistakes. Yeah, it's, it's funny, actually, my son, who's just starting to play, uh, football soccer and he's got into a development squad and he's a perfectionist which is terrible right because because <laughs> i say to him it's, it's progress not perfection and that's really hard because by learning as i say sometimes you win sometimes you learn right because yeah. you learn so much by things that don't work and then you so long as you don't accept that as permanent it's just a minor setback and you can you can change 100 oh, percent. i'm definitely not a perfectionist no and so in terms of your team one of the things i've noticed immediately as well too is that your team are super friendly like they are everybody is looks you. you in the eye everybody immediately greets you they're welcoming there's no you know obviously that's part of your culture that's something that's obviously that that either you've attracted to or you have instilled into your team in terms of, you know, hiring these people. What What is it about that? What part of the team, obviously it's important, but is that critical for your success? I th yeah, I 100% think it is. Yeah. I think people are so important to, to the business um, and, you know, even down to the fact of calling them team, you know, not employees. And I think that's really important because they're a part of, we're a team, you yeah. know, and yeah, it is. I think from all, you know, from all these books and all these learnings and, you know, mistakes that I've made over the years, it, you know, I, I actually want to, you know, how Enjoy the Journey actually started. It was, you know, I was so hard on myself and, you know, when I wanted to become a professional motocross athlete and any athlete that goes through that, they go through so many mental struggles when they're trying to become the best or they're trying to achieve something. So they almost put too much pressure on themselves. Yeah. And then they almost go backwards because they're putting too much pressure on themselves. So with the journey with LKI at LSKD, I, I was, you know, I was putting so much pressure on myself to want to be something with the brand and be, you know, at the time, I, I, we, you know, we wanted to be really big, but we just couldn't, we, we didn't know what we were doing wrong. And then when we transitioned to LSKD, I was, you know, I was almost like, I really want to enjoy this. I want yeah. to have fun. You yeah. know, it's going to be hard and it's harder than ever. And I'm learning a lot, but I want to have fun, you know, and I want to look back on my life and go, wow. That was super fun. It was super hard, but it was good times. And we created a phenomenal team. That team has gone off to do amazing things, whether they're in the business or out of the business. And, you know, in the future, and hopefully they stay, but if they go, hopefully, you know, they, you know, they're even going even further if we can't give it to them. But sure. I think part of that was like, I actually really want to enjoy what I'm doing and I want to work with great people. And I, and I, and I you know, and I love coming to work every day. Like, yeah. I get FOMO if I can't come in, you know, yeah. I want to be a part of it. You know, yeah. it's why I don't have an office. I like yeah. to work with people and I can sometimes annoy them too much, but sure. you know, I love being in the mix and learning. And I think that was a big decision that when I made that, I was like, how do we develop people within the business and create a, a you know, whether it's the word culture or a community within the business. Mm -hmm. And when we created the mission of inspiring people to chase the vibe, I really wanted to create it internally first because yeah. I thought that's really important to do it internally first before it goes, you know, before we, you know, as we, you know, now we're signing a lot more athletes and what we're doing with our community with fitness and, and you know, partnerships and that side of things. So, yeah, it was a really, it, it, we, we really wanted to create that um, and we're not perfect, but I think that was a really big focus of mine was how do we, you know, work with amazing people and, and you know, when you're an e-com brand, you can't hide. Yeah. So, you know, you can't hide. If you make a mistake, it, it's out, you know, whether whatever social channel, it's out. So you have to work really hard. And I think, you know, you know, create a community is another one of our values. You know, you, you've got to work hard to create a community and, you know, you, you are going to make mistakes and you got to learn from it. But if the team is aligned back to that and we're all there to work for our community yeah. 
to help them be 1% better every day, it can create this kind of special thing that I probably didn't realize what we've created, it, to be honest. Like, it's sure. kind of come to life and been like, default, wow. Right? Like you're just on the journey and all of a sudden you step back and you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty amazing. Yeah, and, and, and we're on board with audio books, you know, so yep. we're very passionate about investing in our team. and What, their what audio books? books? Uh, I mean, there's quite a few now. It's probably up to 10, but I mean, you know, there's Delivering Happiness, there's- uh, you, you, that, You've mentioned that to me. So we, we were doing a tour through the facility, having a bit of a look, yeah. which is just incredible. Yeah, right? thank like you. Just, just, you know, again, for me personally as well too, I think I get really excited when I see um, success and especially from humble beginnings. And it's funny because both you and I come from Logan, which yeah. is not considered to be, you know, probably the most affluent, you know, area. I don't know what your upbringing was like or how- well to do your parents were and what have you. We came from New Zealand originally and I remember- I'm half Kiwi, so- Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. my dad was from there. What, yeah. what, what part from? Oh. Do you know where you-, where you I haven't spoken since I was like 18, but uh, he, my mum's from Australia and my yeah. grandparents are from uh, Italy. My dad's from Wellington. Wellington, yeah. Like Wendy Wellington, Wellington yeah, yeah, I'm from Canterbury. But we, yeah. when we came over, we, I, I remember we had virtually no money. My father was uh, 70. Yeah, wow. And had, had retired, uh, got no- no retirement and went into real estate and didn't sell a house for 11 months. So oh. I remember like we were like really, really struggling. It, 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 and it through. gives you a lot of an appreciation, I think. It, it you does. Know, we didn't have a lot growing up. No. You know, and, and I think um, we went to We had a great upbringing, but we didn't have a lot, you know, with no. growing up with oh, and two I other brothers. I childhood and loved it, but, you know, went to Springwood High. I think you went to... I went to Chisholm. Chisholm College, yeah. 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 So, um, but you grew up in... in I, grew uh, up in, I grew up in Canubia. Canubia, um, yeah. But yeah, and so I used to I ride my bike. I lived in for a little while too. Yeah, so I, we lived on acreage yeah. and I was like, you know, a super cross track. We had a plant nursery. So I used it's to awesome. sell at the markets. You know, we my mum would do the Sunday markets yeah. and I would help sell at the markets. And yeah. we'd go around and knock on doors and get cuttings yeah. um, and then come back and repot it and resell it. Crazy. And I was doing that as probably, I was doing that from, I, mean, I, I would have, I don't, I, I don't know what age I was, we were five. Like I was wow. helping from a really young age and it almost taught me the work ethic I probably have yeah. today. So yeah. I was lucky to go through that, but we had to work, you know, and if you wanted something, you had to work for it so tell me about the very first product because i saw it on the wall your very first shirt yeah, and yeah. Then your very first sale and sort of you know what that felt like you know for you when you when you very first started the brand and i appreciate oh. and what was the mindset at that time was it just to make a little bit of extra money was it oh i mean it depends because 2002 was like you know, I, I'm trying ago, to remember yeah. that was a long time ago, but it was what it was. I never was we weren't, we weren't really making it to go we're going to make a big brand back then 2007 yeah. is when there's two, there's two moments. The first moment is I think, you know, we got some shirts made from a company and I think we even did some contra for plants back then, you know, and, yeah. and you know, yep. we had to put money on my mom's credit card yep. and she was a phenomenal help and, you know, ended up paying that down. But yeah, you know, that, that, that moment, I think, and we set up at the track, to be honest, back then I was actually stoked people like the brand. Yeah. I was like, wow, people like our product. And, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. It was like, just a, and it was just a t-shirt with a very basic design. Yeah, and I mean, back then we had a motorbike. We actually had Chad Reed on the front. He probably never knows that. It's a professional motocross athlete, but- Oh, th there's a joke around, you know, ATP, which if someone's awesome, they're the Chad. So oh, that's great. Chad, sorry, that's why I'm, smi I'm smiling <laughs> oh, at Oh, you can, you can, Google, it, you can Google him. He's yeah, a big sure. athlete in the sport. But yeah, we, you know, we, it was like, there wasn't any design aesthetic around it. But, yeah. you know, I, I think one of the times I, you know, back, if you go to Surface Paradise, you know, in the- uh, back then they would have like those shops and you could buy like three trucker hats for $5. Right. So I would go buy a bunch of trucker hats and then I would go and get them heat press. And, you know, I was giving them to friends at school and, you know, the teacher used to confiscate them off me all the time. <laughs> I, I think I got one, I think I gave one to uh, one of the, one of the guys at school to help me with my mass assignment, you know, I was, wasn't very good at it. So, you know, it was that then, and then in 2007, we, um, back at, when we decided to really put an effort into the brand and said, okay, this is it. I'm going to make something of this company, you yeah. know, and we changed it to LKI. Um, and the abbreviation, uh, I was like, how do I find t-shirts? And it was funny. I was working, I was working as a chippy for a builder and the shirt I was wearing for the builder was actually really good. I was like, this shirt feels pretty good. Yeah. I think it was a Gildan tee then. Oh yeah. And, uh, what year was this? Sorry. 2007. So yeah, I was buying Gildan t-shirts from Sunprints up at, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Underwood. Cameron from Sunprints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was him, I yeah. was buying, I was buying them then when putting my Logos the, the on supplement in TSD logos. And I thought the same thing. Gildan was kind of the gold standard. Yeah, and I was wearing and it as a, I think I was working for Javika Homes and I was wearing their shirts. Well, you're right. So I like looked at the tag and I was like, oh, cool. Gildan. I'm just going to Google the company. Yeah. I, I don't Google that or whatever. And I'm going to go online. And then I ended up getting an account. I've, that's how we found our first property. Because back then we were using probably, you know, to get right into to the to the game of selling shirts, we were using someone that was on buying it, but yep. I was like, I needed to go direct to the source. Yeah, yeah. So I found them and then 
we ended up getting an account with Guild and Direct, and then we then I had to go on the road and find a screen printer. I had one down yep. the Gold Coast Print and Wear. Yep. Um, they were amazing to work with. You know, they're still going to this day. Yep. The early days of printed Billabong, even I think back oh, wow. then. And, and Jeez, um, yeah, yeah and then we were buying tees off Gildan, but I found them because I was wearing the shirt for work. Yep. And I think that was like a moment where I was like, okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna make a thousand shirts. Wow. Put That's, them on a credit card yeah. and try. And I think it was five designs on the shirt. So yep. I had this designer that created five designs and the LKI logo he threw in there for 30 bucks. Um, I think we spent good. about $1,700, which we didn't even have, but it was yeah. a bunch of designs. Yeah. And then those five designs, we did a bunch of colors and we, did, we didn't really know, we just picked a bunch of colors we thought were cool. Yep. And then, um, and then just stocked my mom's bedroom. And you know, from there we stocked them. And then I was just, I was literally, I, th I think I remember at one point, like, I don't even think I've shared this, but at one point I, I was, you know, I'd be working with friends on, this, on job sites and I'd be like, hey, if you give me 50 bucks, I'll give you five t-shirts. Like wow. well, we were making no money, but I was just, how do I get the brand out hey, there? How right. do I get people to like it? And yep. then, you know, cause I had friends, so they, you know, they became friends. I'm like, hey, if you, if you give me $50, I'll give you five shirts and it'll cover, it'll hopefully cover some of the costs because I just wanted to get the brand out there and they yep. became friends, you know, but you know, if you had an athlete, you give them free product, but I was like, how do I cover my costs? Yeah, you know, yeah, to, yeah. so at least cover some of the costs so I can make more shirts. And, and, um, but that was a moment, I think that moment there, I always remember where it was like, we made a thousand tees and we're like, how are we going to sell these thousand tees to buy more product and then start buying hoodies in winter and then screen printing logos of that we really loved on it. Yep. Um, and then we were just kind of printing what we thought cool. And, and then it went from my mom's bedroom to, you know, to had a little office there to then we started filling out the house to then we ended up with one container, two containers, and then three 20 foot containers in the property. Um, so, so you were getting them, um, buying the Gildan shirts, working with a local printer and then uh, just- And then we were them. on and selling, where them, were you selling them. Yeah. Uh, and, so and we, when did that, when did your first commercial sale happen? Like, which was oh, it a little independent surf we, store or? It actually was and it was a motorcycle store back then. Um, and it was called Wales Kawasaki. A guy, Brett Whale, got me into in there and I thought he was gonna sponsor me to race motocross. I thought he was gonna give me a free bike. I was excited. <laughs> and he said, I wanna stock your brand. And I was like, oh, that's cool. okay, cool. But I actually wanted oh, a right. bike because I wanted to race. Yeah, yeah. So it was more focused on being an athlete than selling t-shirts back then. But and that um, was 2007? Was I it? think it was a little earlier than that, to be honest, but it was around that time. Right. And he said, I want to stock your brand. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. His son's overseas racing and doing really well now. So it, 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 yeah, he, he that was the first time I got in and I actually was hoping he was going to sponsor me. It's funny. So why did he want to stock your brand? Like, I mean, he, he, oh. he liked the brand. He thought he could, he could um, make I'm trying profit, to remember. It was a long time ago, but it, it's kind of cool talking about it. But I, he, so I was really good friends, a family, uh, uh, when I finished school, I ended up working in a bricklaying yard before I became an apprentice carpenter. And um, the bricklaying yard I worked in was a family friend and his son, Dan Reardon, was like one of the best in Australia. And he won a lot of championships. Right. He traveled to America. Yeah. He grew up in Logan as well. Yeah. And so he was sponsored by that company right. for bikes and, and rode for factory Kawasaki, which was run. So I, I, I was friends with everyone in those circles, kind of you know, got to grow up with a lot of pro athletes. And I was lucky enough then to, Dan and I went to school together and I got to go riding with him. And so he would help me get faster because he was so good. So I actually, you know, there was another part I got to learn a lot about with yeah. hanging out with pro athletes from BMX to motocross. But yeah, I just knew them through the sport. And then, you know, I was like, oh, maybe he's gonna sponsor me a free bike because, you know, I'm slowly getting better. And, you know, he wanted to stop the brand, which was amazing then, but, you know, I didn't really think anything of it because right. I was, you know, I didn't really believe in it then before hit 2007. But I think, I think, it, it was tough. I mean, it was, it didn't just kick straight away. I had to get on the road and sell. I mean, I was, you know, flying to Perth for a week. I broke my, when I broke my wrist, I jumped on a plane and flew to Perth and stayed at a family friend's house, rented a car and had this little catalog and I would go into stores and drop catalogs off and, you know, and try and sell. And I, I probably only got two orders, you know, a couple yep. of thousand dollars. Of the, it didn't even cover the cost of the trip, you right. know, like it was all on the credit card, but it really taught me how to build relationships. It really taught me how to, you know, you had to get out and there was no really e-commerce back then. You yeah, know, we yeah. didn't really have an e-commerce store. 2007, yep. Yeah. yeah, this is 2007 to 2010. Yep. Um, and it was just really grassroots, you know, we'd set up an event, we'd sponsor heaps of different events. We would, you know, what, what, what kind is coming back in today with doing local events and, you know, that really grassroots stuff. And, and we do a lot of that today. A lot of that stuff we were doing, you know, 10 years ago that I really got to learn a lot about how to set up an event, you know, how to build a community, you know, at different events and tracks. And when we transitioned Ellis Keddie, the community really followed us as well, which was amazing through all different action sports and fitness. They followed us and they really loved the shift because we were getting feedback if they liked the change to Ellis Katie, our community that were buying the product. So, so emails. 
uh, social, how was it coming through? How was it? Uh, well, I mean, it was physically asking them being at events, oh, right, what do you yeah. think of the logos? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and then we yeah. saw sales coming through where our community was buying more LSKD product than LKI. Yeah, so we were like, there's something here. Yeah. Um, maybe they like, and it was a gut feeling. I was like, I think we, we were so ingrained uh, in motocross back then that I really wanted to support athletes, but change the perception of the way motocross was perceived because we didn't just, we sponsored a lot of different athletes and, and I, and when we changed the brand, I was really going, okay, well, this is a, a kind of almost not a clean slate, but it was like the community loved LSKD yeah. and we were getting out of making all these other products because I just couldn't do everything. I, I physically couldn't. It was like, you know, it's mentally draining trying to be in a bunch of different categories and a bunch of different stores. I'm like, if I can just focus on one thing, mm. you know, that'll give me a clear focus and just try and be best in the world at that one thing. Yeah. Um, and then that really gave us a lot of focus. And, but that came, it didn't come from you know, me just coming up with the idea myself. I would go out and get feedback. I would talk to different, you know, whether it's athletes or our community buying and our team and just, and just get feedback, you know, it was very grassroots, you know, it hold yeah. a, I'd literally hold the stick, the, the logos up and say, which one do you like? And they'd point at LSKD and I'm like, okay, cool. You like that? Like it wasn't, yeah. we didn't go form focus groups yep. and these big groups. We didn't have any money. So, you know, you can't go to these big group sessions and yeah. So yeah, it was it was just it was really grassroots led to how we made the shift. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, back then. And so and so then you started selling into uh, Brothers Nielsen and and when did that, that sort of transition happen? Um, because I, and I appreciate up until that point it was largely the motocross community that was using it, or people starting to sort of cross. We had over a we had a brand. big community through like all different action sports, like wakeboarding, yep. you know, MX. Like we started sponsoring a lot of different athletes, and and that kind of chased the vibe movement with sport as well and fitness. But and those sponsored athletes was it just St apparel and pretty much apparel yeah little... and relationship driven we didn't really have any money to pay athletes then we, yep. we had one athlete we'd sign that was a pretty big thing for us uh who was a who you know matt moss then yeah um but was it expensive as far as like you know in terms of like oh, for company? us it was yeah. uh yeah back then yeah and 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 it was a really good thing you know learning experience to go through but when we we got into so i started trying to sell to a major called city beach there's yep. 66 stores and i think we the got city, in, is city beach only 66 stores i think there's 66 yeah i think i think maybe less i don't I, wow i can't remember yeah so that was 66 stores and that was the pinnacle to get into so we we ended up getting into city beach i think in 2011 right. um and i was you know the first time i showed up there i got stood up for the meeting and they didn't show up right. so i was like oh great so you know it's never perfect and then the second time I ended up building a really great relationship with the buyer, the new buyer that came in and um, that was buying our t-shirts at the time. Um, and then we got into City Beach and things started to really grow. Um, we just moved into the office, our first office in 2010, um, the one we literally only just moved out of the office area, not the fulfillment center. Right. Um, at the start of the year, it was we were pretty outgrown it, but yep. we, and we still got it to this day actually, where, which is really that? cool. Where is uh, it? It's in Yatla. In Yatla. Yep. Yeah, so it's really cool. Just down the road. From, just, yeah, yeah, not too far. Yep. Um, and we got into City Beach and once we got into there, we started to learning around um, indent ordering and wholesale and developing product 13 months in advance. And I was really lucky to meet someone that introduced me to a lot of amazing suppliers offshore in, you know, say China and different yep. manufacturers. Do, I mean, look, if you're going to be competitive, right, it makes sense. Yeah. And, yep. and, and just the manufacturing process with different things with like the way you would stitch a garment, yep. you know, printing processes and things if you want to really take your, you know, within performance product or whatever, you know, whether it's in a street product. So... Um, I actually got to do my first trip to China in 2011. Wow. So you know, I was really lucky to travel with someone that taught me a lot around the culture and how, you know, and getting to travel for a week and, and build great relationships um, with suppliers over there. So I started traveling in 2011, started learning how it all worked. And at the same time, we just got into City Beach and we were in a lot of independent retailers um, and then we were selling at events. So yep. we didn't really have much of an online business then. What, what sort of percentage of your sales was coming through, say, City Beach and other established retail mm -hmm. stores and, and sort of what were you selling direct? Oh, or, I mean, like it went, through, through markets and or stalls and that sort of thing. It went through like peaks and troughs. I, I think, you know, City Beach became a big portion of our brand then, which, you know, was 30% of our business, I think, back then. Yeah. So it was a quite a big portion of our brand and helping us, you know, get our brand off the ground. They were a massive help back then. Um, I can't really remember. And I think we got into about 150 independents, 200 independent retailers around Australia. And yep. we built a sales team, uh, built, you know, had a national sales manager, built it up. We would go on the road and, and sell all over Australia. We had yep. agents, yep. you know, we would sell in, you know, six months in advance, yep. we would be developing the product. But what I learned was, was developing the product that far in advance 
was you didn't get to learn from what your community wanted. So you'd be right. developing product from what the retailer wanted, not from what the from what your community or customer wanted. So yeah, right. that was a really big learning experience for me over the years where I was like, I want to develop a product for our customers, not what the retailer wants. So yeah. that was a really big learning experience for me that helped us to what, you know, essentially what we do today. So I was lucky enough to get this almost like on the job MBA over the last 15 yeah. years that really helped me to where, you know, how was, you know, how much clearer we are from all the mistakes. You know, we're still making mistakes today, but what we've learned today. So so, so I'm really fascinated. One of the things I know- <laughs> I have to, about, Yeah, it's cool to be able to share this stuff. I'm digging deep into the archives. Oh, I, I love it because, and a lot of other people that listen to this as well too, a lot of people, you know, want to run their own business. A lot of people are inspired by these sorts of, you know, sort of small Logan kid makes it good, right? So yeah. but the thing that, that impressed me so much that I heard about and I'd like to know more about is that obviously, and I think you're touching on it now as well, is that you're- your focus is obviously your inline consumer, the person who puts the shirt on their back, right? Like in all the, yeah, you know, whatever yeah. the product is that, you know, whether it's yeah, leggings or, or you know, yeah. I know, I know Aaron is going to wear some yoga pants from you. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm going to make it look great. In yeah, he would. Um, but is that was obviously your focus. And because, you know, when you're serving the purchasing officers and cause they're still your customer, yeah. but they're not your in inline consumer. How did you, cause I know that you had, uh, uh, a pivot point, uh, you know, where you basically went, hang on a minute, our, our current sales um, channel is not working in, in alignment with our values because um, can you tell me a little bit about how you pulled out of City Beach and, and sort of yeah. why that decision came about and then where you were, where, what was happening to your business at that time? Yeah, I mean, there's a, yeah, happened? it's a great question. There's a million things around it. Um, I can imagine. So I'll try, try not to, to try to give the short version, but we weren't doing that well. Um, you know, it was really tough. We weren't what getting- What year was this? I mean, this was from 2016 to 2018, we really didn't grow. And we were kind of stuck on, you know, a few million dollar number that we couldn't grow. And I didn't know why. And it was still a really good business, but I didn't know why. And I, I didn't understand it. And, and it got to the point where like you would, you were, we would try and really innovate and push forward as a brand with design. Um, and I was probably very reactive with trying to do a bunch of things. If they wanted us to make it, we would make stuff. And, you know, yeah. we were, you know, we were trying to do life jackets and all these other categories and it was kind of got very distracting, but- Life jackets in City Beach? And no, in not in City Beach, we're in water sports stores with life and jackets. Sports, well. okay, so we had yeah, a yeah. bunch of different yeah, retail yeah. accounts that we were selling to and they were great, but it was very distracting in terms of how do you just do one thing really well. Yeah. And when we were in the, when I was going through that period, we were starting to really push forward as a brand with design and really going, well, out we've got our athletes and, and our community and our team wanting to push forward with these designs, but sometimes they would never get pushed forward into being produced because the retailers didn't want to buy them. Yeah, right. So once that started to happen, I was like, well, that's not fun because, you know, we want to keep evolving as a brand and growing and, and not just stay doing the same thing that we've done for the last five to 10 years. You, you know, we, we got our core products and we're really different now because we really develop a lot of raw materials and our leggings are our own raw material, our rep fabric, our Zephyr fabric. So right. we spent a lot of time on developing raw materials and fabrics and fit and, you know, even, you know, even with our t-shirts and, and the way it fits and feels, yeah. you know, this, oh, we weren't even at that stage then, <coughs> excuse me. So we wanted to really evolve the brand and we were kind of being held back. And, you know, when, you, when you're in certain, when, when you're in majors, a lot of the majors have their own brands in store as well. Yeah. So they make a lot of their own brands, yes. which everyone, every, every, whether it's, whether it's uh, grocery chains, supplements, supplements, they <laughs> all have their own brands. So yeah. it gets to the point where they will sell it cheaper. Yeah than a brand, but the brand is investing in, you know, whether it's marketing athletes, their team, they're really trying to develop to push boundaries. So yeah, going through totally, that- Totally, totally, I'm there now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So going through that experience, I was like, well, this isn't fun because, you know, you would develop this amazing range and it would, wouldn't get purchased and because other products were getting made. So I went through that experience and to be honest, I really tried to pitch to some of these major re these major retailers that, you know, come on this journey with us at LSKD. When we decided to change LSKD, we really wanted to have a mission and values and stand for something. And the values yeah. came down the track. It was the mission first. And they weren't on board with it. They didn't like it. 
you know, lot, quite a few people didn't like what we were doing. Um, you know, because we were kind of being the anti-establishment. We're like, no, we're gonna we're gonna stick true to our guns and we're gonna That's design right. for our customers. Yeah. You know what they want, and we're gonna stick to a mission and we're gonna stay true to this thing. And I want to build something bigger than ourselves. And I want to develop our team in house. And I want to help grow their careers. I want to change the way these things. And you know, we created a motto: we don't have competition. We set the standard and said, you know, I'm not gonna watch what everyone else does. I'm gonna stay in our lane yeah. and 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 focus on our community. So it was at the first, it was, it was scary. I'm like, okay, is this thing gonna work? Like, you know, so it, it was a really like slow step-by-step -step process. And then I started to understand my numbers. You know, I got an amazing CFO who started a day a week in 2018. He started to teach me, you know, all the different, you know, reporting and things and areas and where, you know, where, you know, how we can we, you know, we, to be honest, we, we weren't profitable. We were, you know, we were, uh, we were, we weren't doing well. There was weeks I couldn't pay myself. Like yep. it was super tough. And I was like, you know, it was like, okay, well, how are we going to get out of this? Like, yeah. I love what I do. I love getting up every day and I love inspiring people to chase the vibe. I love fitness. You know, I love training. I love action sports, but how am I going to get out of this? Like, you know, and realizing we had a, some products that our community loved. And I started developing a pair of leggings that took us 15 to six, 15 plus months to develop. Right. And we listened to our community and we developed our own raw material. We spent a lot of time on it, you know, for the customer. And we released a product that was for them and, 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 and really focused on the fit, the feel, the fabric, so they could train at high intensity, but they could wear it whenever they wanted. And that product, you know, it was a real, that rep, our rep type was our real pinnacle point moment where it really went, okay, this product kind of grew really quickly and helped us to grow our brand yeah. because we wanted to be a sportswear brand with a street aesthetic. So yeah, yeah, it kind yeah, yeah. of just through all these times of learning and struggles kind of helped us to get out. And I was like, you know what? I really do, you know, I, I, to be honest, I'm really thankful for being in wholesale stores and they taught me so much. I don't, you know, I'm not, and, and to say sure. we wouldn't go on wholesale in the future, I wouldn't say that, you yeah. know, especially as we go more global, I'm not saying, and I don't want to say that that was, it was bad. It was the best thing that ever happened to me because if it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't know what I'm doing, what we're doing today as a brand and a, and yeah. a team. So, cause it's, you know, that it is tough at the time and you hate it, but then you're like, sure. well, without that, I wouldn't learn from it. Yeah. So, you know, when we, when we did that and then, you know, we were already growing pre COVID. Um, you know, the, the 2019 was really good and we were like, wow, okay, right. this isn't, this is amazing. Like yep. we're really building this e-commerce side to our brand. Maybe we can just fully focus because when you've got two sides to it, it's a lot of work. Sure. You almost got two different departments so and I was sales force external. And then obviously well, you, 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 you wholesale and your e com yep. And I was like, yep. we need to focus on one thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's too, it's distracting. Uh, and, and, but I was like, no, 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 like support our retailers. And then when COVID hit, um, you know, we, we offered the, we offered the opportunity for our, you know, our, our retailers to cancel their orders. We said, look guys, if you want to cancel, we understand you can cancel. They canceled all their orders and we sold all their stock and they, they did ca cancel their orders. Pretty much 95% of them canceled all their orders. <laughs> um, and, <sighs> and we sold it all, but you sold it direct. We sold it direct. And, and I said, you know what? Like if that's the case, we're not going back. Um, Fair enough. and we closed our wholesale business down first of July. Uh, 2020 and you know then the phone started ringing and you know it, it, it you, you know and they all wanted it back and and it was a really humbling experience to know that hey we must be doing something right for our community and this is exciting but let's just stay focused on building a brand you know and creating something bigger than ourselves so there's a million different things around that that happened it was a really tough time but i'm very lucky i got to experience and thankful for that because it's really made us appreciate where we're at today it's, it's, um, it's, it's amazing I, like I've, I've got a actually a, a, a contract that I'm working with it's actually become a business mentor because we're moving into slightly different areas we're going the opposite way we're going into um, into grocery right which yeah. is a different beast I mean I've always been a specialty fan and he said to me because I've been talking to him a lot about similar sorts of issues as well too right sort of like this whole economy is changing obviously COVID changed things and you know that that sort of interaction with the inline consumer is so critical right um, and he said Jeff make sure that whatever you do that you have, you know, your high level agreements in place, but that there is a deep alignment. In other words, that you're you're both aligned. And he goes, this yeah, is the where, are aligned. and this is, I guess, where we've fallen a little bit out as well too, is that we don't have that deep alignment sometimes. So to hear your story is just really an exclamation part, mark for me. Is this obviously looking after your customers, developing something that's obviously this this new um, uh, you product know, fabric and yeah, fit. And it's obviously a passion, and then being able to obviously provide that to the community, which you knew that they wanted, which obviously you're validated through these orders as well too. Uh, it's a fascinating story. I mean, yeah, I'm learning yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah, I really yeah, am. It has been wild. And when you look back, it's just like, wow, it's the last few years has been a blur. Yeah. Uh, and to see, you know, 
how far it's come so quickly, but it's been that 15 plus years to get to that moment. Yeah. Um, and then we're like, okay, wow, like we're, we're just getting started, you know, we're, we're, you know, how do we keep developing amazing product? And, you know, we're now signing, you know, athletes all over the world. And yeah, well, it's like, super I exciting. That you're moving into the United States. I, I know that you're sort of like, obviously Australia is your, your biggest mark. Is that true? Is yeah, that Australia, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. Australia, New Zealand. Yep. And, and, and what's next for you? So obviously into, into the US as well. I mean, too. we're still laser focused on our Australian community and, and, you know, we're an Aussie brand and and it's you know what's exciting is i wanted to like you said from logan before like one of my goals you know one of our goals was to know that why don't we you know when we do different media releases and different things we're a brand from logan not brisbane yep. you know we yep. are from logan i'm very passionate about saying no we're from logan yep. um because i think it's you know that's to me it's a, if we could build a global brand from logan in australia uh -huh. I think that's really inspiring and create, you know, phenomenal careers from Logan and Australia. I think that really inspires me to, to, you know, to be proud of that where I wasn't before that, you no. know, you're always like, Oh, I'm from Gold Coast or I'm from Brisbane. Yeah. So for me, I'm really proud of that. Um, and what we're doing in Australia and, you know, our first retail store here at our HQ has been phenomenal. And the amount of, you know, you yeah. get to meet the community, you know, you, I mean, we're in our rave cave and, yeah. you know, we're, you know, it's which amazing. is our boardroom, but we call it the rave it's, cave. It's, and by the way, it's, beautiful i mean yeah, i'm even looking at the floors going oh my gosh i mean like the polished concrete floor is just i mean it's just an absolutely just an amazing yeah, place you. to work as well too and and we don't have you know we don't have frosting on the windows like we don't hide you know and our stores right next to there where our community shopping and we're all here working in a part of it so yeah, yeah, yeah. for me you know what we're doing in australia is early days and it's super exciting we're going to take that space and then in new zealand and then at the same time we're building our u.s community so we've got a team in the u.s a small team and yep. you know we I, you know, just lucky enough to go there for two weeks. A uh, team of five of us just went over there for two weeks and spent some time over there with our team. And, you know, we're building the brand there as well. So, fantastic. You know, it's going to take time, but we're, you know, we're building the brand there. And, you know, we've got, you know, we've just signed a, a professional CrossFit athlete and uh, another big female can athlete. Mention, can you mention who the athlete is now? Uh, yeah, we can actually. So, we just signed Khan Porter Khan to the team. An awesome athlete. I actually am a huge fan of him. I mean, obviously oh, cool. we've got our athletes as well too. And Khan is somebody who's always he's a yeah. super nice guy. I've heard he's a really, really good guy. Yeah, he's but a legend. An inc incredible athlete as well too. And he's actually friends with with one of our athletes. Oh, as that's well cool. Too. Yeah. So yeah. he was cool. We, you know, we did. I mean, he's over in Ireland training at the moment, and uh, it was super cool to chat to him. And the whole team's been talking to him. So that that actually gets announced today. Yep. Um. So we're super stoked on that. And 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 he really aligned. And the thing, the values are really aligned. Um. Yeah. You know, he's got a podcast. Yep. You know, with mental health podcast which we love and how yep. you know and and you know, he's a phenomenal guy and uh and then we've got another big female athlete we've just signed in the u.s so that's really you exciting who that is or not yet uh, uh, yeah way. we can yeah yeah, yeah. so we, we, yeah we, we i mean we just signed demi bagby so she's a she's a really big female athlete yeah. um in the u.s she's got about 17 million followers through her channels Whoa. uh we got to we got to train with her a couple of times i did jujitsu with her when i was over there Holy and cow got myself handed uh you know she, uh, yeah it was fun but it, yeah it's, it's, she's a phenomenal athlete and it's really exciting to have a top female athlete join the team yep. um from the u.s so yep. we're going to be doing a lot of things with demi and and what we're doing over there so it's, it's exciting it's funny that you mentioned um the whole logan thing as well too because I, I was a little bit the same when i first came over here and you know going to springwood high and sort of like it was almost yeah, a little bit maybe embarrassed, just, you know, because obviously a bit lower socioeconomic and all the rest of it, obviously in certain parts. And and uh, no, I'm fully embracing it now as well too. I, I love it because it's it's part of who makes you who you are. It's part of that story. Yeah, We, we nearly opened up a facility in, in Texas. Uh, in yeah, fact, well. I actually signed the lease on a facility in Texas and I was going to set up our bar line, which has been five years, $10 million That's in investment, crazy. right? And I nearly set it up in the US because I wanted to – the focus of the company was to reach as many people as possible to to spread the good word of, of health, nutrition and wellness. And again, we're very much into natural ingredients and things like that, which is sort of what we stand for is, is really trying to help people with their health and fitness goals. And we thought that we might be able to serve more people by going over there. We didn't, and I'm glad that we didn't because we feel the same way as well too. We set up a world-class facility here in Logan, literally. Yeah, like 10 minutes. Of, yeah, 10 minutes up the road there as well too. And, and it's that ability to be able to actually take the 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 Logan, the Queensland, and the Australian made to the rest of the world, which I think is all about quality and all about the Australian spirit, if if that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas if we were manufacturing our, our product in 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 the US, um, you know, and that would have been fine as well too, but it would have I think diminished our business and sort of our roots, if that yeah. makes sense. So it's yeah. funny that you say the same thing because yeah, yeah. I think we're very passionate about yeah. it. And and knowing that you know. It, it is super inspiring to see, a, you know, Australian brands grow international. You know, I think it's really inspiring and it inspired me to go, can we build a global brand with a head office from Logan, Australia and 
create careers all over the world and people can not only travel to Australia, but also our Australian team can travel all over the world. So that inspired me. And, you know, we talk about that a lot, you know, what's possible. So, you know, yeah. that's, it's, it's something I'm passionate about. Yeah, absolutely. So I've, I saw a picture of you with Mark Wahlberg the other day. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. It was crazy. Uh, it was fun. He's a weapon. I'm, I'm a 50. huge fan of him, man. Like he is, he's married to the same wife. Like he's, he's not the typical. No, he's super humble. Super it, humble. You know, I, I just, yeah, yeah, we, we, I mean, we, we got to train a fair bit in the U S I meet a lot of amazing people and, and we, yeah, we went to the F45 at Sherman Oaks and we got invited to a private session. We know the team there quite well and got invited to a private session and his whole team was there. There was, it was five of them. There was his uh, personal assistant, his medic, his bodyguard, his PT and his driver. So he had, you know, it's the, he had the crew there yeah. uh, and a lot, most of them were all training as well. Yeah. Uh, they're all weapons, but yeah, he's a, he's a super cool guy. It was so yeah. cool to meet him. Yeah. Uh, and he you know, talked about Australia coming over. He said he hated sitting two weeks in quarantine when he had to, we were the only country I think that did two weeks quarantine. So he was <laughs> off that, but yeah, he's a super humble guy. And yeah. like for someone that's 50 and yeah. just, it was like, man, I hope, I hope I'm like that at 50. Just, yeah shredded and just an absolute weapon yeah, it looks it looks amazing it looks amazing yeah and he just come back guy. from a session so he had a pt session uh in the morning he did like back and buys and then he came there to do the session as well wow so he doubled up so he, he joined in like pretty much session started he joined in so he doubled up in the morning apparently he's got a, like a crazy gym in his own house have you have you seen it yeah and i yeah. think that's where he was training from right i haven't seen it yeah. i actually haven't seen it i know his routine he gets up at 2 30 a.m and he's just a weapon um, but yeah, he, he, he's got a, yeah, his routine's nuts, but I have, I know he's, and I think he's got a golf course there as well. He plays a lot of oh, golf. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. He plays a lot of golf as well. Yeah. It was super cool. I mean, even just to talk to him for five minutes was like, oh, a fanboy moment. So, uh, yeah. And it's amazing as well too. Like you, you do get the opportunity to meet, you know, people that maybe, uh, you, you know, might not have met before. Like I got to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger one time, at, on the test, <laughs> yeah. which is really cool. Like, you know, obviously a hero from, from back in the day. But yeah. So in terms of highlights and lowlights, you know, things that have been, okay, well, I mean, obviously talking about Mark Wahlberg, that's probably up there, but What's been the highlight since you've started your business journey? Like what has been, you know, like the absolute pinnacle moments? And it might be in business or people that you've met or, um, you know, c customer reactions. Like what, what's sort of the thing? I, I, I think probably one of the biggest highlights for me in my career um, is really seeing something that our mission and we create, you know, really creating something from an authentic place come to life and seeing our team live and breathe it and the authenticity coming from it and you know our passion for inspiring people to chase survive and our passion to really grow our brand and our community come to life i think hands down is like really inspiring and to be honest it inspires me every day cuz you know you, you you know this journey isn't perfect and you have your good days and you have bad days as well and and when you see the team and the team picks you up you know when they're doing things and you know, they're throwing things that they've achieved in Slack or what's happening or, you know, they're doing Slack? something. Slack, is that that's a community board? Our Slack channel that we chat in yep. as a team and, and, you know, which we set up during COVID because there's a way we could all connect when we had to do the work, you know, di different periods we all had to work from home. So, yeah, I think it's that. I think it's a real highlight for me that's really inspired me that what gets me up every day, you know, I, I you know, for me, Chase the Vibe is something that, you know, I'm training for a marathon with, oh, wow. with a couple of guys at the moment. I, I, I did the one, I did one last year. It was yep. unofficial because GC got canceled like a week out, but oh. I was like, I'm still going to run it. I've trained yeah. for it. And, you know, that, that gets me up every day, you know, in terms of, you know, if, you know, cause I don't know who I'm inspiring cause I, there's crew around me that I train with, you know, with our team here, our fr my friends, like, you know, my team here are my friends. So it's like, you know, you build those relationships and when they're doing stuff, I get inspired from it. Yeah. And so it inspires me to get out and, and, and chase the vibe, you know, through, through fitness and what I do. So, yeah, I think that has been pretty the pinnacle highlight to see something we're creating and it actually coming to life and and our team living and breathing it every day and they work so hard yeah. is is inspiring and and what's possible could we do globally is yeah. really exciting. So yeah, that that's something. I mean, it, it's really cool meeting. I, coming back from America, I got to meet so many founders and you know I got to spend a lot of time with different founders over there and learn and yeah. you know some really phenomenal brands over there that I got to spend time with and like, learn like, from. Anyone in particular that you f were really inspired by that you met, like that you can mention. Oh, I mean, oh, I mean, I actually even got to meet the 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 the, the CEO, ex CEO, of Billabong for fifteen years. You know, yeah, yeah, America. yeah. Like I got to yeah. spend time with Coco Paul. I, you know, founder of uh, I built really good relationships. The founder of Blenders Eyewear in the US, and gone, and then Chase. Uh, you, know, you know, Griffin, who is one of the founders of Pure Vita bracelets, and. You know, I just reached out to some of these guys because I was really inspired by them, and, and now they've become friends. And you know, yeah, we're, you know, we're help with you know, and you don't realize how much you actually might be giving them advice, but they're giving you so much, and you help each other out. And yeah. I've noticed that with e-commerce, everyone's really 
everyone wants to help each other compared yeah. to the whole, being in a part of wholesale. And I love that because yeah. we're all about partnerships and helping each other grow and, yep. you know, we're, we're all in it together. So yeah, that, that, that's, that was really cool. You know, I got yeah. to spend, spend time with some really cool people over there, which is epic. Well, and it's funny because, you know, obviously we're just noticing the same thing. Like I think for the last couple of years, we've just been three years actually we've had the snot snap smacked out of us we got we got beat up real bad in 2019 as well too with some legislation changes and some hurt and then we yep. ran straight into COVID. and i'm just now starting to stick my head out again and reached out to the the owner of delicio the other day which is a great brand actually creating you know, yeah yeah sort of plant-based you know sort of Pro proteins they do yeah, yeah, well, yeah. They, well they, they, they they've got um like uh seasoning and stuff like that they sell all through you know woolies and that sort of stuff as well too and it's amazing stuff and just listening to his story as well too is so inspiring and obviously reaching out with you as well too yeah. and getting to meet you and listening to what you're doing as well too and and creating that um that community if you like of of like-minded entrepreneurs is really really great because i think this is where you know, listening to other people's success and even the people that are listening to this podcast as well too. There's probably a lot of people listening that have gone through some freaking hard times. Yeah, and, well, it's you know, a lonely it, journey. It is. And so it's, to understand that it's not always plain sailing, that there's, you yeah. know, as you say, there's peaks and troughs and valleys. and Yeah, it's that, it's and that. 100%. And you start to realize that, you know, because, you know, I, I'm, you know, I've had to learn a lot of things and, and you, you know, it's so easy to get self-doubt in yourself, but you start to realize that everyone's winging it and everyone's out there learning themselves. And when you get to spend time with people that are doing amazing things and you learn from them, you're like, okay, cool. Like we're all in the same boat together. We're yeah. all winging it. We're all learning. And, you know, as long as we, you know, it's, we're not perfect and we're going to make a lot of mistakes and that's okay. Yeah. You know, I, I think that gives you that confidence to know that everyone has great days and bad days and that's that's okay and that's part of when you're building something you're really passionate about or if you're a professional athlete and what you go through you know they say i think they say like jordan missed more three pointers than he made he just shot a lot more than everyone else do you know so and and, and look at that so it's like you know you, you start to realize that it's not going to be perfect and you and i think having great people around you is really important we have a, a great team and do you know and, and being authentic if you are dealing with problems you, you share it with the team and how we work through it together i think you know having a really good team around you is important because it is it's a, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a full-on journey yeah and, and you're right it's, it's who, who you got on the bus that can help you so worst moment or worst couple of moments things where you've just put the key in the door or you're at home and you just you can't sleep at night like what, what have been some of the, the worst things that have happened that oh. you've that obviously that you've overcome or that you've had to face Oh, I mean, there's been there's been plenty. I mean, just going through. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I made quite. I mean, there's some different mistakes that I made in the early days. You know, where I, I made a mistake with the e-commerce store going from Magento, and uh, I bet your mind's worth. But keep going. Yeah, you know, cost solid six figures, and we, you know, it nearly it wasn't a good time. You know, I think it was like 2016, and yeah. tried to get. So you, you changed platforms, or we we ended up going to Shopify, but we were in Magento, and and I tried to bring someone in house to help me with Magento, and he completely cooked the store up, and and it literally could didn't make any sales. So it was you know it was slowly growing, but it, no one could check out for like six months. So you're talking, you know. I don't know the stores are maybe twenty thousand dollars a month, and 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 it, you know it was growing to thirty, but it wouldn't do any sales. So it was a lot wow. of money, and and I was yeah. like, oh wow, okay, this is not good, and we had to move to Shopify. So it was a well over a hundred thousand dollar learning curve. So that that was a that was a, a good learning curve for me and a real eye opener, and and probably learning that I thought that person had experience, but he didn't. And when I looked at his background, he never really built any stores like that. So I I, I, I trusted that person, and I really you know wanted to, him to succeed but he you know and he almost wiped his hands and walked away from it and it wasn't a good time i mean there's times like that you go through oh but that happens all the time um I'll, I'll tell you something really funny my wife and i had a, another business called the supplement den yep and we were doing half a million dollars a line this is back in 2009 2010 half a million dollars a month online and we were our, our site was breaking we actually custom made that site from a, a company called rocket retail that's long since gone but it was we built our dna into the into the into the you know we, we were the, one of the first companies that offered the 150 dollars free uh, over free we had the if it's out of stock it would yeah, email yeah, them. yeah we put all these things i remember, I remember this, all this, that this is this is way back right this is like when there you there wasn't shop and all the rest of it and we had to change the website so we went with the uh, adobe which we were looking at magento and Adobe and Adobe and we worked with a company called Pretty Pollution that said, "Oh no, no, go for the Adobe. Adobe are going to make you like a, a feature. We're going to match you dollar for dollar." So we created this amazing spend and all the rest of it. And to cut a long story short, we went from literally the first page of Google, I think you know, 
with SEO and all the rest of it in, in the top three searches. Wow. We went to page eight. They did no split testing. They did no, they did nothing. They, they, they launched the, the site when Tony and I were overseas on holidays. We told them not to launch it, wait until we go. And, and it basically bankrupted the company. So we had a wow. company that was doing about, you know, three quarters of a million dollars a month, 250 through the store and 500. And, and literally we started ATP Science off the back of that business where I owed $400,000 in personal debt that I had to somehow work out oh. how I was going to pay that back, right? So the funny thing is our stories very similar, are, so, yeah. are so similar, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like you're doing really well, everything going great. And then one poor decision, you know, one thing that doesn't work out can – yeah, just about well, as, Jim, you, as Jim Collins says, productive paranoia. You've always got to, you know, it's, it's never perfect because <laughs> there's things that can go wrong, do you know, and, and you've got to stay on 24-7. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, there's plenty of moments like that uh, that's happened. And I mean, even growing up wanting to be a pro athlete and you weren't good enough, you know, that was a tough moment. You're like, oh, oh man, I'm not good enough. But, you know, this was my calling, you know, building a, a brand and, you know, so which gave me a focus to have. So oh, yeah, and, there, and there was plenty. And regrets. One of, the, one of the most destructive things things right because you're taking what's in your past you're you're bringing it into your present and you're destroying your future and i actually went to a a a mental health seminar sort of on overcoming you know setbacks and and sort of actually recognizing that what's in your past you don't need to constantly relive that which was just really liberating for me yeah it wasn't Um, called landmark was it it's exactly what it was called i've done that yeah our team does it yeah yeah i've done it and it's funny because it comes off as being very cultish but the thing is is that it's actually not. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I, I attribute it. that a big part of my career. Me too, actually, yeah. to be honest, because yeah, yeah. it really helped me to understand. Because I had the same thing. I would played um, rugby as a Canterbury junior, um, you know, was was playing for Southeast Queensland in rugby, um, you know, was a pretty talented athlete, both in, in tennis and rugby, and then yeah. dislocated my knee, 180 degree um, yeah. dislocation, and then left and went from being fit, strong, you know, potential yeah. you know, athlete, probably at the same thing as well too, but never really knowing. And if then, you actually could have made if it. If I actually could have made from it. From an injury, because yeah, your injury and then, stopped that. And then actually became really unhealthy, nearly died, nearly drank myself to death. Literally, my parents went back to New Zealand um, and just went out with the boys, drank, you know, yeah, soaked up. Wow. I was living on two minute noodles and spending all of my money on alcohol Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, and literally ended up in hospital with peritonitis, which then became infected and spent three weeks in hospital. Yeah. And nearly died, right? So, and that's when I had an epiphany after that. And that's when I started to get into- It was your lowest moments. moment to come back Look, from. Yeah. Ex- exactly right. But it's those kind of moments that really can, you can use to define what's important to you and, <laughs> yeah. how, and how you want to live. Yeah. And, and, and that course is very powerful for that. We're, yeah. we're big on that. And I mean, and, and, and even, I probably didn't make it when sound as hard it? it was, but the transition from LKO to LSKD was really hard. Yeah. We didn't know if it was going to work. You know, a lot of people doubted it. It was yeah. really tough time. Like it was a really tough time. So that transition was, it was a, it was a very clarity point for me, but it was a very tough time. A lot of people didn't back me through that and didn't yeah. think I could make it. Um, so that, that was tough. Like that was probably just as tough. Cause I also was like, how are we going to actually become profitable and, and turn this, you know, we, you know, we weren't not, not profitable. We just weren't growing. We weren't making, you know, we to reinvest back in building the brand. So, um, but to answer your question, Landmark, I did it in 2015. Yeah, right. So my wife and I did it and my mum did it in 2015. Yeah, I think I did it in about 2012. Yeah, yeah wow. So yeah. Not, not like Yeah, that. I think yeah. when I did it, it was 250 people in it. Now I think they, because the team, our team do it. We pay for our team to go through that course if they yeah. want to do it. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's only at 50 at the moment because of COVID, but when I did it, it was a huge, and yeah. when I actually, when I went through it, I, I actually couldn't get up and share. I was so nervous, yeah, you right. know, public, I can talk one-on-one like this, no worries at all. But when yeah. I had to public speak, I would shit myself. So yeah. I, I, um, I actually joined a Toastmasters for two years. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and to learn how to public speak because yeah. I, I just couldn't. And, and, and I always had this sense of feeling that if my career did grow in my role, that I would have to public speak more, you know, and even in front of the team, I would get nervous talking in front of five to 10 people I would shit myself. So I was yeah, like, yeah. okay, I, I got to fix this problem. Um, so I joined a Toastmasters club for nearly two years and learned how to speak, impromptu speak. And, and you know, that was a really, you know, I attribute, you know, when I went to LAM, I was like, man, I, I, I couldn't speak in front of, you know, all these people. So how am I going? And I still get nervous when I have to go and public speak now, but yep. you know, it can be more clear and more clearer on what I'm, the message I want to share about the why instead of just, you know, shaking and, you know, you, you get rid of the nerves, can, can get rid of the nerves pretty quick. But yeah, yeah that, that was a, a real uh, pinnacle point to like go to Toastmasters and then realizing now my career where it's going today, I'm like, wow, okay, that helped me so much doing two years of 
uh, Toastmasters because at Landmark, I was like, I'm not getting up and sharing in front of 250 people. No way. <laughs> it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny what holds you back. And, and, and it's that whole thing about fear. And, and that's the thing I loved about Landmark. And look, for people that are Googling it going, oh my gosh, this is a cult. It's not. Um, they're, yeah. they're very, but it's a very different way of thinking, which I think challenges a lot of people. And certainly if you're not prepared to let go of that, that security of fear, because yeah. it's almost like you hold on to this because it's a, it's a false reality that you've created. Yeah. You can actually let go of that and understand. Yeah, the past is the past. And, and that thing as well too is that, you know, the only thing to fear is fear itself. You've, you've probably heard that before. And it's so funny yeah. because people just won't let go of it. And yeah. I can see the debilitation that it creates for a lot of people is, you know, and whether it be being an entrepreneur, which means risk taker, right? Risk means potential chance of loss and failure. Um, but actually being able to step out, you can then create those things. Um, but so many people don't step out. They never take that. That. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you get worried. What, you, you get to that point where you get worried what people will think, yeah. you know. And so when you start to release that, I'm not going to worry what people think anymore, and I'm going to really give it a shot. Um, and I'm not going to be perfect at it, but I'm going to give it a go and not care what people think. Then yeah. that really releases the you know your past experiences to what you're doing in the present. And yeah, I mean, I haven't been. I, I did the I did the two ten weeks. I did a ten week after and another ten week, and and got all, I loved it. But I've actually never been back since. But yeah. I still use the tools today. So, and and then you know I've gone off and done Tony Robbins. I was big big fan of Tony's uh, went to his UPW in 2019 the last one he did and you know love that as well so I, I definitely do a lot of those different things not as much now it gets a lot harder yeah. with, with time and having two young kids and you know family you know is just as important so making sure I can balance my time with my career family and and you know training so but I listen to a lot of books I'm just obsessed with listening to books so, so you've mentioned a couple already with the, the, the Zappos book which actually has been recommended to me four times and yeah. I actually got the book someone actually gave it to me and it sat there I haven't I've read never it. read so the physical audio it, it, but I read yeah. it. It's great. Yeah, I mean, and and to go back to those books, it's uh, you know delivering happiness. There's legacy. There's uh, the founder of Lululemon. There's uh, tribal leadership. Um, then we have another one, the tipping point. You know, there's good to great. There's oh, start with uh, why. Start with why. Yeah. There, there's also a, another really good one. Um, oh, it's come off the back of my tongue. Anyway, if I remember it, I'll let you know. Um, uh, oh, forgotten it. It's all about being hungry, humble, and smart. And the, the, the other one that I mention all the time, and again, just for people that are listening that I absolutely love, and you can read it in probably an afternoon, is Who Moved My Cheese? I don't know if you've ever heard I've heard of it. it. I actually haven't listened to it. Unbelievable book. book because it is just – and look, what you've done is exactly that. Like, you know, things don't stay constant. You know, COVID, um, you know, the, the alignment, things – other companies change. Things outside of your control change. And if you it, – effectively, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a expose on – if you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result, that's the definition of an insanity. It, it's really sort of honing that 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 process is that, it, and it's actually okay to change. Again, it's about the fear. Yeah. So people keep repeating the same pattern out of out of fear, but when things move, you must move and must adapt with oh, it. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, moving from El Catalos KD was one of the biggest shifts, you know. And we and when we and when we did that change from a micro detail, we we could we we you know our inner logos on our tees still said LKI. We had to slowly transition. We still had LKI product, but we'd completely changed the brand. You know, there was still LSKD on t-shirts with an LKI logo or on product, but yeah, yeah you had, we had, we literally changed the whole thing. I literally, we rebuilt the whole thing from the ground up and so we're going to do it different. And wow. that change was massive, you know, and it didn't work for some people and, and um, they didn't like it, but I was like, you know, I think this is the right thing. And you know, learnings from Landmark really help with that. And and learning from the team and the community and, and talking to different people about like, and, and researching going, what, you know, what is the why behind it? And what is our why? And, you know, I want to enjoy this, but yeah, making that change is tough, you know, yeah, you, is. and especially as you get bigger, you're always constantly like evolving as a brand, you know, especially where we're at now and what we're doing, you know, globally. And, you know, as our team grows and, and making sure that the importance of developing our team and understanding the why and the mission and values is really important to, how we develop our product, uh, you know, talking to our community. And yeah, th there's all those little moving parts you're constantly evolving on every single day. You could sit in the office for hours and just be like, okay, I've learned that today. How do we improve that? How do we improve that? You constantly yeah. just want to be 1% better. Oh, I can just, I can see it. I can sense it from your team, for it, from the environment, everything. You're really executing really well on the philosophy of who you are. It's actually inspiring me. There's actually, I think because <laughs> sometimes, and, and this is where I think, you know, with ATP as well too, is because we've been beat up so bad for the last couple of years, 
we become internally focused and we've sort of lost a little bit of our focus on our, on our consumer, on our end line consumer and our, and our customer. Uh, and again, it's, that's not by decision, that's just by, um, it's like a defensive driving course. And yeah. in the defensive driving course, you would know I've this better than anyone, right? For sure. I've Which been. is when we're there, I was out at Willow Bank and the guy said, right, there's a, there's a, there's a pillar here, right? There's a block here. And it was a like a foam pad, a big one. And we had to jump in our car, and we had to do like an like an S um, an S turn, like brake yeah. around it, and what have you. And and everybody hit the hit, hit the hit the pad, right? And he said, "I'll give you the secret." He said, "Don't look at the obstacle; look at the space that you want to go to." And I'm like, and, it, and when we did that, and almost everyone got through, right? Yeah. And I'm like, man, that is such an analogy for life. Yeah. You know, so it's, simple. It's, well, it's so simple, right? But it's true. You you gravitate to what you focus on. Yeah. If you look to the opportunity and the space and where you want to go, as opposed to looking at the thing that you don't want to do or the thing that you're you're consumed, you know, especially the negative stuff. Yeah. You start to to manifest yeah, and yeah. breed and pull more of that negative energy and that doubt and that loss and that. Hundred percent. It's yeah. funny, eh? It's just funny. And and you're gonna see you're gonna get all that at the same time when you're doing it. But if you focus on that, that's where you end up. So you've got to push to where you think is best for 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 the team or whatever you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um. And I mean that's the thing learning from athletes. They go through so many of those oh. struggles. You know, they you know, I'm, I'm you know listening to podcast from Ben Crow and Ash Barty's, you know, Ash Amazing. Barty's mindset coach. And you listen to him and you're like, wow, like when she's, you know, just when she won the Australian Open and the mindset for her to come back and win, you know, when I think it was like she was, you know, was six two or something and she came back and won it, you know, like for the mindset, you know, it's the same thing you do whether you're in a business, whether you're, you know, whatever you're doing every day, whether you're in the gym, like, you know, you're going for a goal of an event, like how do you shift your mindset to focus and enjoy it to stay focused on what matters yep. is a real big thing. I think mindset play such a big part in everything you do yeah um the reason why i train the reason why i you know want to run a marathon it's all about the mindset it's yeah. all about like you know as you know so goggins would say callous in your mind you're trying to prepare yourself every single day um you know and and you kind of going you know you're going to battle every day with what you do whether it's through training you know with your career because it's not a perfect journey you know yeah. so yeah. you know you get inspired watching that i love watching you know how you know people can go from there to greatness and how they've how they've mapped their way through it because it hasn't been you know it hasn't been a perfect journey for them to get there yep. um and no one's had a perfect journey there it's no. always a, you know there's always tough times they go through and how they learn from that it's it's actually inspiring watching that because then you can be better as well yeah yeah that's it that's it that's it all right i've got some questions from our, right. let's our team fire right. them away so, hopefully i can answer so, them. so we said they were going to come out and talk to you and, and, and quite a few of the guys were, were pretty excited to obviously um uh, ask you some questions. Okay, um, is the fashion trend that you wish for LSK? Well, is there a fashion trend that you wish LSKD never jumped on board with? Um, no, because no. you learned from it, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything that didn't yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. LKI, there was things which we yeah, know, but LSKD, no, no. You know, we create functional sports over the street aesthetic and everything we think about is for the community and how we can improve for them. So no. Yep. And everything has a season, right? So some, some things might work for a period of time and then- Yeah, not, and not everything's worked either all the time, but you learn from it. So yeah, yeah. yeah no. Um, what uh, is the process of product development? Like how do you come up with your, your what you're gonna do next or the new trend or the, you know, I mean, yeah. can you maybe talk about the the, the pants, um, the, the, the- Well, yeah, the, I mean, product development, depending on the product and depending on the fit and the fabrication and, you know, the way, I mean, we, we you know, we have an amazing product development team um, and, you know, we develop everything in house, you know, from, you know, pretty much from the ground up. And then obviously our suppliers, we have suppliers overseas that make it, but we have to develop it from scratch and we do the measure, measurement fits and specs. And, you know, we're doing it, we're testing it with athletes, fit models, you know, really focusing on the way it's worn, whether, you know, depending on the garment and what it is, whether it's a bra to a pair of leggings, to shorts, to, you know, a t-shirt or a jacket or a sweater. So the development pretty much starts, you know, with a line drawing and looking at fabrication and raw materials and how that raw material is going to work. And as, as we're growing in sportswear a lot more, um, you know, we're, you know, we're really developing a lot more raw materials into sportswear now. Um, and that's, that's something we're really evolving over the next 12 months, which is really exciting. Um, it, it, it's a long process. It can take 12 plus months to develop a product. Um, you know, you can get products that can take a lot quicker because you've already got the fabric and raw material, but then you've got, when you're developing a new product from scratch, you know, we're already thinking development of 2023. It takes time because you might go through a number of samples of raw materials. 
Uh, do you know, as we were chatting before, we're giving this new t-shirt fabric to someone to go and yeah. pretty much do like a active escapes warrior to go and test this thing for five days, you know, almost like its own hell week with that AE warrior that they do with the active escapes. Cause we partnered with that active escapes and he's testing this product there to see how it wears, how it sweats, you know, and, and we want feedback of how that thing's going to wear, you know, is it going to smell under the armpits and get that stink in it? Is it, you know, how can we make sure that this garment is perfect for, for an athlete to train in and wear every day? Yep. So, yeah, the, it starts the line drawing and, you, and you're obviously, then you've got to base it out to, you You know, you create your design and the fabrication and you create a tech pack, which is a page is page long of measurement specs throughout the entire garment and it gets sent to our suppliers and they'll come back with their samples. And then you might go through three to plus to 10 iterations to get that perfect product for, yep. you know, your community. So product development is a long process, but uh, you know, that that's part of, you know, lucky enough being in this position now with LSKD, we've got to learn it over the past 10 plus years of developing product from the ground up, which, you know, we're very proud of because we do a lot of it in house with our team and develop from the ground up and, you know, and work with our manufacturers. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a long process, but it's also very rewarding because the work that they do is phenomenal. And Certainly, I am not an expert on clothing at all. It's really funny. I, I I love supporting Australian brands. Love it. So whenever I buy a dress shirt, I buy RM Williams because yeah. I know they're Australian company. All my I've been wearing another brand. I'm going to change all my brand to your brand. Oh, thanks, bro. No, because <laughs> at the end of the day, right? We we've got to support. We've yeah, hundred percent. I to love doing that. Local, local, yeah, you know, of course, I've met you now as well too. So I believe in your brand. Oh, thanks, and the, bro. what I was going to say though is, I was looking at the material out there, and I'm not an expert, but I'm looking at it, I'm going. I want to wear that. And yeah. like and literally the look and the feel and the way that it, it, it falls as well too, if that makes sense. Yeah. So whereas like yeah. even this shirt that I'm wearing at the moment, I, I don't like it because I can wear it for half a day and it smells. Yeah. You know, yeah it's yeah, kind yeah. of got that sort of thing to yeah, it. Yeah, fabric anyway. is so important. It and is. We, you know, we do a lot of, yeah, a lot of our stuff, like our street style products, especially like oversized fits, is it, we're using a, you know, cotton stretch fabric so it fits and it has that feel to it, but it's also an oversized fit to our, you know, we have a few different fits. So just probably more of an example from men's tees. We have a few different fits. You know, you got your standard fit, like a sports athletic fit, to your t tad taller fit, to then an oversized fit. But we want right. to use a similar fabric so you can wear it how you want and style it. Yeah. We'll so you can wear it with a pair of rep shorts. You know, and I'll wear I wear rep shorts pretty much to the office every day. But I'll train in them as well. Yeah. And I'll run a half marathon in them, and yep. I'll go to the gym in it. You know, I'm doing a session today at one yep. with our uh, one of our athletes, Ryan, in the gym with the team today, and I'll train in them, and then I'll just switch to another pair of rep shorts after it. So yeah. Right. Right. We wanted to make that product that you can literally you could train in it or you can wear it every day as well so it's that's well, something that we really wanted to work on as a team i mean like you know i'm not going to be gracing the covers of any bodybuilding magazines <laughs> or what have you and i like functional as you say sort of stuff that you can wear every day i am most comfortable like that too you're talking about you're turning up to events and talking I, I, i'm that as well too i don't like I, in fact i've never worn a tie i don't like them like they just annoy me right yeah and i figure i don't uh, it was mark zuckerberg that just turned up in a in a in a, in a hoodie yeah. I think it was, right? Yeah, it's hoodie like, and a well, tee. This Be is who I am, right? So, yeah, that, that, that's it. And if you can do it in a way that obviously uh, you feel comfortable in, that's that's what it's about. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I love it. Um, all right. Um, was your uh, – this doesn't make sense. Would your biggest <laughs> tip for creating community in your – what is your biggest tip for creating community in your business for your customers? How do you do this? So how do you create community in your business for your customers? How do you, how, yeah, so what the, the community, your, your customers, how, how do you create the community for them? I mean, I mean, there's a couple of different ways. I mean, you know, for us developing an amazing product and trying to be best in the world at, you know, product for them is means when they try it on and they, they love it, and they feel amazing in it, it creates a conversation. Um, and I mean, we're very focused on, um, on actually, you know, building a community one essentially one customer at a time like we want to talk to everyone and you know we work really hard as a customer support team to to do that and, and we've got a facebook community with like over forty eight thousand just in the facebook community and there's wow. a lot of conversations that i had there and a lot of authenticity in there and our team does an amazing job just chatting in there and yeah. and and i think you know when you talk about creating a community it's all about the small things i think that make a big difference um you know whether it's literally just talking to someone on the phone or making that phone call and our, our customer support team do such a phenomenal job there of like, you know, really they, they're the backbone of building a community that, you know, they're part of it. They're such a key part of any business, you know, whereas historically it's like, oh, it's just, you know, it, it, it's just, you know, customer service where it's not, that's such a big part. And I think that's one yeah. of the most, you know, biggest parts of a brand that's underestimated how important customer support is to, to create a community because, 
you know, if you, something goes wrong, if you get an order and, you know, we do free returns, we do, you know, free exchanges. So if you, if you, you know, something we worked really hard on is if you get a product and you go, actually, I want to, I, I want to, I want to change my size, we'll exchange it for free and we'll send that Garmin our product out to you and you, ha and you've got 14 days to send the product back. Wow. So, because we were selling out of sizes so quick that they, they'd they send their product back and by the time they went to get their size, it was missed out. So we're like, how do we create an instant, ex we do instant exchanges now. So you can instantly exchange. If you get the product and you don't like, if it doesn't fit, you can instant exchange it and then you just send that with a free return. Wow. So we want to create that experience for the community that they can get free returns, they can get instant exchanges. So they've got that, you know, buying online can be quite scary sometimes when you're buying a new product for the first time and you don't know the brand or your fit. So you can buy two sizes and return one. Wow. You know, we applaud that because yeah. we're like, hey, we want to make sure you get the best experience from us. Well, you yeah. know, we even say it on our store, buy two sizes and return one if you don't know your size because, That's you know, awesome. we'll, do, we'll return it for free. And you use universal sizing, obviously. So if I'm an XL and you're an XL in everything or is it? Is yeah, it we, we also do have a, uh, an area that says if it's a tad smaller, true to size or a tad bigger. Right. So because we all have our different sizes yeah. where I, you know, I might wear a large or an extra large myself pending on the fit because I might get a little bit bigger um, and oversized myself. So we do have areas where it'll say what size the fit is as well to try and really help give that experience. But then you can chat to our customer support team online as well. So, yep. you know, I think creating a community is a million things done really well, but you never underestimate the small things of just having a conversation. Yeah. And, and making sure it stays true to your mission and values as yep. well that you've created within your, t within your brand or business. Yeah, yeah. No, my wife and I do power shopping. We never try anything on when we're there. We just go and we go boom, 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 grab everything and we go. Tony's friends, now it's probably not so amazing for a guy, but for a female, yeah, yeah. like my wife, she is, she is, we call it power shopping. We're like, right, power button on and that's it. We're in and out. Literally we get in and out. I love we, that. <laughs> but I reckon I'd rather do it online. So yeah. yeah, I reckon that's the way to go. So, and, and your website for people that want to, hearing this for the first time who maybe didn't know who want to check you out yeah Where's, what's your website uh so it's uh lskd.co.co.co .co. .co. Yep. .co. yeah dot co i mean you can do .com as well now um okay. but yeah it's dot co okay what's so, co oh we actually to be honest we couldn't get dot com oh wow uh, we've got it now who had lst lskd.com yeah i actually don't we we only we actually bought it last year so we uh, had the squatter I think so. Yeah. So when, when we transitioned, we, we actually, we couldn't get it. It was too expensive to be honest, like full transparency. So we just went, well, what's best next best.co. Yep. So we, it wasn't a strategy actually. It was yep. uh, we couldn't get it. And uh, we, now we own.com too, but okay. we've just decided to keep.co. Did you as have well. to pay a lot for it? Did it come down a bit? Yeah, it was a fair bit. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I mean, for long term, it was really stopped that squatting uh, thing in the yeah. States. I think you can take them to court. If, oh, you, can if you've you? got yeah. the brand, yeah. Especially, yeah. Are you registered in the States? Yes, yeah, yeah, globally, you, yeah. You probably could take them to court. I c yeah, I can't remember how it was done. It was We did it through a broker, but we got it. Okay. We got no. it. It was, it was it was a proud moment when we got it yeah. and we were able to buy it. But, awesome. you know, it wasn't cheap. But at the no. same time, we're thinking long-term for our brand, but we kept it .co. We got um, we got these guys in China that ripped off our brand. <laughs> they came oh. over and met with us. They wanted to start it up. And then all of a sudden, do you remember these photos that we saw? And these guys are wearing ATP with this brand. And they're like, there's all these massive Chinese bodybuilders. But this is when we sponsored Jocelyn Arnowitz, who's an amazing athlete uh, as yeah. a bodybuilder. We were sort of already heading down that route. And uh, they loved him. And of course, then they've just gone. So they've ripped off our entire brand. Oh, so, and you trademark over there? Yeah. Well, oh, we're having all sorts of issues with oh, to yeah, trademark licensing tough. in Asia. It's, it's just really tough. We've yeah. actually got a brand, they're saying, because we have ATP, um, there's pharmaceutical companies over there with completely different logo called with ATP in it, and they we can't register it because anyway. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, I, could I, imagine. I understand your pain and long term, of yeah, trademarks. long term trademarking, and that is very important. Oh, yeah, very important. It's really tough. Yeah. Really tough. Um, okay, so uh, next one. Uh, when coming up with new items of clothing, do you try to style them based on what you think people are going to want, or are they based off what you see yourself um, that you'd like to see as an awesome design? So, uh, so is well, it true to yourself? Do you develop for your community or is it a we do, Yeah, I mean, we listen to, we do, you know, focus groups uh, through athletes, creators, our team here. Plus, you know, we listen to what our community is saying. They give us a lot of feedback as well. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's, you know, we're developing a lot of new products based on their feedback. Um, you know, I mean, perfect example is we actually, uh, we actually had a, um, a sweater called, we ended up calling it the Bianca Orange uh, and our Facebook community, she, Bianca actually put a design into the community of this like orange colorway and we actually reposted it and said if it gets 500 likes in an hour um, we'll make we'll make it and we'll give Bianca one and this colorway of one of our sweaters um, over, over last year's winter and, and it got 500 likes in like 
I think a couple of minutes. Like wow. it was wild. So we ended up making it for her and and uh, and then we actually flew her up, Bianca up for our launch opening here. We flew a bunch of our customers up. So she was just a customer? Like she didn't yeah, work she, for the company? She no, was no. A customer. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 wow. yeah. And we and then we uh and then you know when we did our opening of our new HQ, we flew a bunch of our like customers up and to thank them and flew them up and they give us feedback and they were out helping us in the store. And, you know, I, I mean, that's for that's us, cool, it's just man. authentic and, yeah. and what we do. So when we're development, there's a number of different ways, but definitely listening to the community and gaining feedback and from athletes and from, you know, the team is really important. So, yeah. yeah. And you know, there, there is obviously the data side to it, but there's also the authentic side to understanding the why behind a product as well. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Jason, it's been awesome spending the time with you. Yeah, mate. No, thank as, you. As I said, like of, of, I heard little bits about you and I didn't want to learn too much because I was just inspired by your story. Again, Logan kid like myself as well too, obviously <laughs> making good. But for, for our listeners and, and those that might not know you, obviously they can go to lskd.com um, to learn more about you, obviously your socials as well too. Yeah. Do you yeah, have anything you. else you want to say there? Um, no, I, I mean, I really appreciate sharing the story and I hope uh, the community got a lot out of it. It's yeah. uh, inspiring to be able to share it myself. I get inspired hearing it. So yeah, no, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I absolutely in fact to tell you the truth there's a few things that you've really inspired me just from this podcast as well too that i'm going to sort of start up to implement yeah so, thanks yeah. appreciate it yeah thanks awesome again. thanks for coming on thanks jeff appreciate it bro take care thanks.